Okay, so what we're going to do right now is show you how to do a post metacog. Remember, kids, that you do not have to do this if you do not want to, but it's very important that you understand that if you do this, you will be able to earn some of the points you have missed on your tests back, and you can try to avoid missing the same questions again in the future. So I've taken this one particular question from chapter six, I believe, which is about an enlightenment um, era. And I'm gonna show you what you would do with this particular question should you have missed it on the test. The question reads, which person would probably not have been influenced by the philosophs? The correct answer should be D as in David, which says a scholar who believed in geocentric theory. So that is the answer because geocentric theory is actually more of an ancient theory and someone who was influenced by the philosophers would believe in the heliocentric, uh, heliocentric theory which came, which came up during the scientific revolution. And so someone not being influenced by the philosophers would be someone who believed in old scientific um, understandings and concepts. But let's say that you said um, the answer was B, which is a salon leader. And I'm going to show you what you're going to do for your post metacog so that you would get one third of a point back. So in other words, one third of a point, you would do three questions in order to get one whole point back. Um, I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but it does add up. And again, it goes into your effort grade and it's a good bargaining chip if at the end of the semester you're really close to the next higher grade up. Okay, so first and foremost, post metacogs must be done inside my classroom. It must be done on uh, line sheets of paper in blue or black ink, and it must be handwritten. The reason I ask you to do all of this is to avoid any sort of academic dishonesty. So let's go ahead and get started on this question right away. Okay, so what you would do, so what will you do at this point is you would actually just write down what it is that you originally said was the answer. So I'm going to go with, um, and you, you don't really have to do that, I suppose. You don't have to do it in any particular order, but just to kind of give you some sort of structure, I would always say, do the one that you missed first. So I'm going to say, okay, a salon leader. Oh, I forgot to put down that this was choice B. And then I would explain why this person would have been influenced by the philosophers. So you would say a salon leader. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and write it and you can just watch it. So hopefully that particular explanation makes sense. Um, so in other words, I chose something that I did supposedly wrong in this hypothetically hypothetical situation. 
and I re-explain why that was not the correct answer. So you're gonna do this with every single one of them, except for obviously the correct answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and attack the correct answer right now. And notice how I'm going to put a star next to it to indicate to myself and to the reader, which is going to be me, your teacher, and to say, okay, this I understand is now the correct answer. Okay, I'm not gonna talk out loud, I'm just gonna go ahead and write what um, I would write in a post metacog in order to, for me to get this point. So that looks pretty good. Oh, I don't know why that bullet did that, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase it. Um, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that one alone. I'm gonna just kind of do a couple of things so it lines up okay. And then I'm gonna go on to all the other ones, um, all the other options to make sure that I understand why those are not the correct answers and so that my reader understands that I understand that. Okay, so now um, I'm going to go ahead and look at the other ones. I don't know why it does that. I hate that. So hopefully you've been able to read that. And last but not least, um, I'm going to go ahead and finish up and do C. Oh, now it's changed font on me. Great. Okay. Whatever. You guys get the idea.
Okay. Hopefully I spelled that right. Oh my gosh, I have no idea. Okay, so I think that's it. So as you can see, it's quite lengthy. And um, I don't know how else to put it, but it is a lengthy process. But I guarantee you it's worth it. You're going to get your points back. You're going to learn a lot. It's almost a guarantee you're never going to miss these questions again. And you can recall that most of my tests actually have questions from previous tests. So this is a really good way to make sure you don't make those same mistakes. All right. So if you should have um, missed a question that was not a multiple choice, so let's say it was like a fill-in, um, what you would do is you would simply write in what it is that you have written and you would explain why that is not the correct answer and then you would write down the correct answer and like you would for a multiple choice explain why that is the correct answer and that's all there's to it so I know this video has been really long and hopefully you're able to see and read everything that you're supposed to if you have any questions you can go ahead and ask me tomorrow during class or um, um, or after this weekend or whatever the case may be. Okay, have a great night guys and good luck.